Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to our weekly NFCC Financial Facts chat. Today, we're going to chat a little bit about preparing for holiday shopping and getting your budget ready for that, um, and some tips for Black Friday shopping. Um, today, I am in the office with Bruce, so we're not doing the split screen, um, but thank you for joining. And if you're catching this after the fact, be sure to like or comment so that we know that you're here. And if you have any questions, we'll be sure to answer those after in, in the comments. Um, I'm Courtney Nagel, the Associate Marketing Manager at the NFCC, and this is Bruce. Um, he's the VP of Marketing. Bruce, how are you doing today? Doing all right. Doing all right. How are you? I'm good. It's, good. it's nice to be in the office, and but it was a chilly ride up from Richmond <laughs> this morning. Yeah, and you take a train, and sometimes that can be a little drafty uh, oh, on the right. train where people are coming yes. on. And, Wind is it's pretty it's twenty degrees below the normal temperature today. So yeah, it's really it's kinda crazy, crazy for November in, yeah. here in this area. So but. you probably had to have the, the heat on in the car, the seat heat on. Yeah. I went out at five thirty this morning to start the car. And uh, yeah, it was it was fine, but yeah, this is when it pays to have one of those little remote <laughs> yeah. clickers that you can use right. to start the car like and then making, stay inside. Yeah. Making my Christmas list. Okay, that's <laughs> that's something for the Christmas list. But yeah. yeah, and it was a it was a cold commute for me, even though I did go from the house into the garage, into the car. The, but in the garage it was cold. Right. So it was still, even though it was inside, it was still a little bit cold. So I had to wait and kind of you know get get settled in the car. Yeah. But I'm glad I didn't take the uh, metro today to, to have to walk because I have to. It's an eight minute walk to the metro, and then okay. a, and then about a ten minute walk from metro to the office. And when it's windy and it's blustery, it's cause just miserable. Yeah, there so. was a huge difference between the sunny sidewalk and the not sunny sidewalk this morning. <laughs> it's like the dark side and the light side of the moon. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. But yeah. Uh, but it, but the weather gets you kind of in the mood for the holidays, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Like yeah, I really enjoyed my warm beverage on the way in. Uh huh. And, yeah, having gloves it was like a. It's yeah, it, it gets you in the spirit, and you start seeing people like putting up decorations now and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So I know there's been a lot of studies going around that say people who are happy who decorate earlier or in November are happier than other people. Are you one of those people? <laughs> Well, of course I'm happy. <laughs> I don't need decorations to make me happy. Right. But no, I, I haven't really started decorating. I'm going to be traveling for the holidays. So I, because I'm not going to be there yeah. for the holidays, and I'm going to be at another house where there may be more decorations than there should be, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm making up for it that way. But I feel like I should have something, like a you know maybe a wreath on the door or yeah. some of those little... Uh, electric candles in the window uh so maybe but but your house are you like is the tree up the, uh, no not yet i'm planning to do that this weekend mm -hmm. i did put the wreath on the door mm -hmm. and it and it felt a little premature because it had been warm but now it's like perfect because it has a snowman and things oh, like yeah. that so i'm like the weather's cooperating with my decoration on the at least today door. In right. a few days it'll be 70. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you're gonna have to you know put surf shorts on santa yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's, but a lot of people are thinking about decorating, of course. Uh, um, also, people are out. And it's interesting, too, because you're talking about decorating early. Mm -hmm. The And we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but there's a shopping element to that, too, because if you're going to be decorating and having new things, you have to go out and buy them. Right. And the stores already have decorations set up for you to buy. You go to... Uh, Walmart, Target, those kind of stores, and they've already got these sections set aside. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. Right. They've already got these sections set aside where you can get the uh, the easy to set up tree. You can get the wreath. You can get the you know ornaments for your uh, for your fireplace mantle. Yeah. But if you buy them, <laughs> if you buy them now, you're kind of paying top dollar. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think I saw them out at back to school shopping actually. <laughs> no. <laughs> Some Get out of here. things for Christmas. Yeah. It would have been like, like August. Even light. It was like September. But oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But you're um, paying, but, but now just but know no. that if you have to go out and buy that wreath, if you have to go out and buy that uh, uh, if you have to go out and buy a tree especially, you're probably if you if you pay retail, you're probably going to be paying top dollar. Right. So you're kind of jumping at the first question that I had for you. So when should you start budgeting for the holidays and uh, all the different things that you shop for? Like, 
decorations, gifts, food. You should things. start the minute after you open your last present. On <laughs> <laughs> this is when you should start for the year ahead. So it's always better to plan far in advance. I mean, you can't predict everything, but it's good to know like what, you know, how, how much you're going to have to save on a monthly basis, on a biweekly basis, however you want to set it up um, to get to your savings goal for next year. And then start thinking about uh, if you, if you're starting from scratch, you've never had a holiday budget. You can start thinking about, okay, who are the people that I want to buy gifts for? Am I going to throw a party? Am I going to attend parties? How much is that going to cost? Is there any transportation involved to get to and from, even if it's just a store, uh, if it's going to uh, different holiday themed parties, uh, if you're traveling out of town, those are some of the bigger expenses. You factor that in as well. Then you can start calculating what you need to save out of each paycheck. And the best thing to do there is automate that process so you don't have to, so that you don't get off track with your goal. And you can calculate the amount that you have to save. And you can do it in a way where it doesn't interfere with your other financial obligations. Obviously, you don't want to be taking money away from your mortgage or rent payment right. to reach your, your holiday savings goal. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to take away from some of the necessities. So it gives you the opportunity to make it fit within your budget, make it a regular thing that you can automate. And that way it's January through. And you should probably count on uh, stopping that process around August uh, so you can start shopping earlier uh, and, and start looking at, at sales and things like that. So just expect that you'll probably start withdrawing money out of that uh, in uh, maybe July or August to start taking advantage of sales or gift items that, that you see that come up uh, that are competitively priced. Right. So we should have had this chat. 10 months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So our next holiday theme chat is going to be uh, on uh, December 26th. So tune in. So yeah. what would you say to people who didn't start early for budgeting and they're just like, oh, I need to buy these gifts. How do I fit those into my budget? Yeah, that's that's always a tough spot to be in because you don't want to be the person who you know opens up the opens up the door to your to your where you keep your savings and you just see tumbleweeds and dust. Right. And especially at the holidays, because now, you know, if you celebrate the holidays, you know that there's going to either be some party that you have to attend. There's going to be the expectation of buying gifts for people, uh, those kind of things. What you can probably what you what I would suggest right now, what you can probably do today right now is to look at your budget um, and see if you can find any room to start putting aside even a little bit, even knowing that we're already in the thick of the holiday shopping season. In fact, you know, stores have already been having like pre, pre, pre Black Friday sales. Um, right. There are online deals that have been coming out. There's all this happening on the retail front, but start thinking about the basics. Okay, how much do I need to set aside for attending these parties? Am I expected to bring a gift or something like that? Think about the parameters there, but you can also look for ways to keep you from spending. Think of creative ways to handle some of the gift ideas that you need to come up with. Maybe you can right. make something for somebody. Right. Um, everybody has a talent. Maybe you can offer some of your talents. It doesn't have to be something that you physically make. I mean, I'm horrible at making mm -hmm. things. Like I can't be, I, you wouldn't want to be the recipient of a <laughs> gift that I make. It would just be, it would be more right. insulting to you than it would be a compliment. But there are things, maybe you have a talent that you can do something for somebody. Like you can offer them your services. Right. Um, to help out with chores or babysit their kids or um, yeah. something like that. So there are creative ways around the, the gift thing. And there may be some things that you have to cancel that, and it's a shame that you'll have to do it, but there are things that you might have to cut out. Maybe you have to cut out some of your travel that you were hoping to, uh, to do this holiday season, uh, going to visit relatives, traveling across country. Maybe you keep it local. And an alternative to that is maybe try to host uh, people for the holidays uh, instead of traveling to them. Right. With the expectation that they come and they contribute a little bit to the food and, and some of the other yeah. things that are around the celebration. So that's another potlucks are always more affordable. So if you could get everyone to chip in and do it together instead of making this great meal by yourself. Exactly. And there and there are all kinds of affordable recipes that you can use. So you can stay within your budget to make some good, interesting holiday dishes. 
Um, it's no secret. I don't cook. I don't know what that room is in my house that has the little <laughs> thing with the hot burners and the surface and whatever you call that. Uh, then, kitchen. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, so I, you know, I, but I can make simple holiday dishes and I've had to go to potlucks before and I can make right. things like an avocado dip or something like that. The, uh, a couple of years ago at the staff party, I made the Hawaiian meatballs. Oh, yeah. Um, so all kinds of things that, you know, you can do that are simple. And even if you don't have any cooking talents, you can do it affordably. But the main thing, if you don't have any money saved up now, it's not that you just have to cancel the holidays, pull down the shades, shut off the lights and, and hide away. But you are going to have to face the reality that you're going to have to do things on a very on a shoestring budget. And you right. may have to stay away from uh, the retail side of it altogether, uh, if possible. The worst thing you can do in that situation is to run yourself into debt that you know you're going to have difficulty repaying uh, right. using your credit cards, getting even getting loans to cover holiday gifts. It's 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 a foolish direction to go if you know that you're already having financial troubles that are keeping you from saving. Right. And I know as a mom, I would love a gift of two hours of babysitting or, things, <laughs> or more. Like going out on a date night or anything like that would be a wonderful gift. And it doesn't really cost you anything. Yeah. Um, and I think there are lots of different things you could do, like picking up somebody's leaves or things like that. Those are things mm -hmm. that would normally cost you a lot to get done yeah. um, professionally. But time and time and talent and labor, uh, yeah. they have a significant value. And I can imagine like with a house full of kids, you know, any right. time that you can be given back <laughs> from that <laughs> right. is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. And you'd probably rather have that than a chia pet uh, or <laughs> something like that. Exactly. More <laughs> things to put on my surfaces that need to be cleaned or exactly. maintained. Um, yeah. So we have Black Friday coming up. For the people who are thinking about going, what are your tips or do you have any alternatives where you think they can save more than going on Black Friday? Don't go. That's my tip. <laughs> All right. What's the next question? <laughs> no. Uh, gosh, Black Friday. You know, it's funny. Uh, I I know there are some good deals out there that are advertised. You see them in the paper. Uh, what are they? It's like the Thursday before the the day before. They get, you get that big, huge paper with all the right. items. Yeah. Even on the Sunday before, you get all the sale flyers that come out. Yeah. And you can see. I mean, and I guess some of them are even out now. Like yeah, online you can see Target's Black Friday ad, or yeah, like it's kind of crazy. All the major retailers. Uh, yeah. They're trying to get you in, in the door. That's basically the goal of that. So it's not to offer you the deepest discounts and all that. It's to get you in the door. So the one thing that I always caution people about is you may get super, and I do this too. You may see the sale flyer and you may see an ad for like the 250 inch diagonal TV <laughs> that you would have to take the roof off your house to get it inside. And you see the prices, you know, down to something crazy, like a hundred dollars. Right. And your eyes pop out of your head and you're like, I'm just going to block out that whole morning and I'm going to go and I'm going to wait in line from 1 a.m. And I'm going to have people <laughs> bring me food. I'm going to take my camping equipment so I can hold my place. The reality is that they only have a limited number of those in stock for right. that price. And those are going to go. I mean, you can look at your watch. You can take a stopwatch and probably time the, the amount of time that it uh, takes for those things to go out of stock because it'll be in seconds, not minutes. The very first people in line, they're probably going to go after those things. They're going to sprint through the store with football gear on, mm -hmm. tackling and blocking to get their way to that TV, and then it's out of there. So if you're way back in line or if you go, if you wake up and have a leisurely morning and a cup of coffee and, <laughs> and go to the store, you're probably not going to see that item. But they've got you, though, because that's what they do. They want to get you in the door. And then what they're going to try to do is upsell you on other stuff that might not be as deeply discounted. So you're going to end up with an item that you probably didn't want to buy in the first place, but you were attracted to get to the store because of the item that was on the front page of the sale flyer. Right. <laughs> so be careful. It's a, it's a bait yeah. and switch tactic. I mean, it, it, and, and if, in order to get those top, those most in-demand items, that are the most deeply discounted. The trouble you have to go through to get those is just insane. The camping in front of the store, the, you know, 
you know, skipping Thanksgiving dinner for the ones that do it early and start at like yeah. 6 p.m. Thanksgiving All day. All that valuable time is now wasted trying to get. <laughs> yeah, time you could be spending with loved ones, with right. friends, uh, celebrating the holiday, uh, wasted uh, driving to a store and getting in line. There's also the cost of transportation that you have to factor in. If you have to drive a long way to get to the store, maybe you don't live right in the city, you have to drive 30 or 40 miles to get to the nearest city that has this store. I mean, that's the, add that to the cost of the uh, the item you want to purchase. Sometimes that offsets the, the discount itself. The other thing is they're going to be really doing the hard sell on in-store credit. Right. Uh, so they're going to say, oh, you know, you want to get a deeper discount, open up our in-store credit card yeah. and you can get, you know, I don't know, 30% off your purchase. Think about what you're doing. I mean, to your credit, can you afford to open another line of credit? What is the actual discount? And then what is what are the terms you're stuck with if you're carrying that card? Retail right. credit cards are notorious for having the highest interest rates and highest fees. So you got to be very careful. Maybe you are getting a good deal in the in the beginning. Maybe you can pay off that balance quickly so you benefit the most from that. But what are you stuck with uh, in your wallet long term? And what right. does that do to your credit? Because it's another inquiry on your credit report. Yeah. Good tips to... They definitely try to get you as soon as you're at the register. Yeah. So Black Friday, I don't know. Just if I had to give a short answer, use your make better use of your time. Spend it with family. Spend it with friends. Watch some football games on TV. Go for a hike. Right. Uh, stay away from the mall. So I know that you're traveling a lot this holiday season. What tips do you have for people traveling for looking for cheap ways to travel or good uh, yeah, well, it depends on what kind of traveling you're doing. I guess if you're doing like the long distance traveling, like I'm doing where you're getting on a plane, you're having to deal with airports, you're buying plane tickets, etc. Uh, obviously you want to be competitive about how you buy your plane tickets. Uh, you want to look for the best discounts. You want to shop at the right times. There's all kinds of guidance about what days of the week to, you know, look for the deals and also how to schedule your travel. So you leave on a certain day and you return on a certain day. What I've always found is that if you fly on either late on Christmas Eve or early on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. sometimes you can get some really amazing deals and you're on an empty plane. Uh, one, one year I, I traveled uh, to Salt Lake City uh, for Christmas and I was traveling from Virginia to Salt Lake City. The plane that I was on, this was late Christmas Eve, it was almost midnight, from the connection in St. Louis to Salt Lake City, I was one of maybe two passengers on a full-size jet. So, and I got a rock bottom deal. It was so cheap to fly. So think about those kind of things and maybe you can engineer the time of your departure and your arrival. The worst thing you want to do is to fly on the days where you know the most people are going to be flying. That means demand for seats is going to be higher, which also means that prices are going to be higher as well. You're going to be paying top. Also, if you're thinking of trading, uh, using points, there could be blackout dates for redemption of some kind of travel points. You want to look at the details there. But otherwise, it's a good time to start thinking about cashing in on your reward points for travel. So maybe you have a travel card where you've been accumulating reward points. Cash those in if you can, and it can save you money uh, and trim the cost. And if you have to travel on the higher cost days, it can offset some of that. Um, and the other thing is pack food. If you're going through the airports, if you're flying, you can pack uh, food in your carry-on. You can go to the TSA website to look for guidance on that. Uh, but that can save you money, too, because the markup in airports is crazy. I mean, you just buy a bag of chips. It's like four dollars. Right. Uh, like a bottle of water is about the same price. That's crazy. So you've heard eight bucks for a little bag of chips and a regular sized bottle of water when you could have packed the bag of chips and take a reusable water bottle that you can refill. Most airports actually have fountains that will accommodate uh, water bottles so you can fill them all the way up. So, you know, just think creatively that way. Um and then also, if you're traveling by car, uh, look for, use the apps that like Gas Buddy that'll help you find the cheapest gas where you can pull off the interstate, pull off the freeway, gas up for the lowest price in the area where you have to refuel. Uh, those kind of things can save a lot of money as well. I will say, I do want to add one more thing about the shopping. Shop online. Uh, look for, do Cyber Monday instead of Black Friday. Cyber Monday, you can shop from home. You don't have to drive to a store. And you can still get some deals that are just as good online. And sometimes they're packed, they're, they're coupled with free shipping. Uh, yeah. Do watch out for that. 
shipping costs are where they get you. So you may have a really deep discount on an item, but if you're going to a retail website, uh, especially some of the um, some of the more marginal retail websites that you might not be familiar with, um, they really pack in a lot of additional costs uh, for shipping. Right. And one thing that I would consider is maybe like Cyber Monday, you could go to the store and they will match the cost at some mm -hmm. of the stores. So you can do yeah. price match and still go to the store and shop rather than yeah, dealing actually, with the crowds. I actually did that uh, one year with a TV deal parents their tv went on the on the fritz and uh i had the app on my phone and i was looking at this deal from another retailer in the app and i just happened to be in the store with my dad he wanted this tv in the store and i went up to the guy and i said hey look your competitor's offering it for this price online will you match and they said yes and yeah. so we got it for that exact same price uh, so it's, that's true. That's a really good tactic to use is the price matching to negotiate. Right. And a lot of retailers now are doing that because of the competition online. Mm -hmm. um, but you did talk a little bit about using points for travel. Or do you have any other ways that you would strategically use credit to get more points or mm -hmm. more rewards or those kinds of things while you're shopping? Yeah. And actually, this is something you can do throughout the year. So if you have a cash back rewards card, uh, sometimes they give extra cash back for certain types of transactions. Like let's say their standard rate is like a dollar, a dollar for every, I don't know, hundred spent or something like that on the cash back. Maybe they're giving $2 uh, for every 50 on certain types of purchases that you make with some of their partner, uh, uh, partner uh, companies. So that, that can help as well. So, Look for those kind of deals throughout the year where you can accelerate the accrual of cashback rewards that you can use then. You can actually use cashback rewards for buying gifts for other people, right. uh, for anything you want during the holiday season. So that's also another way that you can maximize. So if you have cashback like that, uh, use that. Also, when another thing that you can do, and this is a travel trick, if you're traveling through certain airports, if you use certain types of credit cards, you can actually have free access to the airport lounges, like the mm -hmm. VIP lounges at different airports. And one of the bonuses of having access to those lounges is, is that you get free food and beverages <laughs> while you're in those lounges. So if yeah. you have, for example, um, uh, certain types of American Express cards will get you access into American Express has their own branded lounge in certain airports. I know they have it at uh, Thurgood Marshall BWI here. Uh, where if you have that card, you just get into their lounge. But some of the major airlines are now doing it. So if you have a certain type of American Express card, you can now get into uh, Delta lounges or United lounges. And once you get inside, uh, you can just graze away yeah. at their free food and yeah. drink beverages, and that saves you money right there. Um, Me speaking from experience. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's I've, I've, I always look for good <laughs> deals like that where I can get in, but that's that's one place. Well, that's one way where you can really cash in on some good benefits while you're traveling. Right. Okay. So, do you have any last minute tips or any other things you think we didn't touch on? Um, yeah, I, I saw some information uh, just yesterday, some uh, data from a study that showed that a lot of people who uh, traveled last holiday season and used credit to pay for it are still paying for that wow. debt still paying for that debt. And the same thing goes for holiday purchases. So if you're in a situation where you feel like you're not making any traction, maybe you got into more debt than you can repay, I think it's a really good idea to take a step back and talk to somebody who can help you put together a strategy to uh, take control of that debt and to get back on track and to pay it off faster and even more affordably and get back on track if you've fallen behind so that's a good opportunity for somebody to connect with an NFCC member agency to reach out to NFCC.org and talk to a credit counselor and put together a plan. And that, you know, the initial consultation is free and you can get an action plan that can help you take control of that debt. Because that's like the nightmare scenario is moving, coming into this holiday season with the debt that you're still carrying. Right. And then adding more to that could be mm -hmm. disastrous. <laughs> exactly. Your finances. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for all your wisdom today on how to shop for the holidays. And we'll be back next week to talk about how to support small businesses for Small Business Saturday. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.